to start off by a little learning point and the learning point I think would be very beneficial to you over the coming period but also in your life it's something that I discovered in my own pursuit and my own studies my own life's experience a long time ago and it has really made a big difference to me in my life and the learning point I want to just chat briefly about tonight is the whole idea of the impact that our thoughts and emotions have on our biology and on our physiology so in this time we know one of the most important things we need to do is mind our immune system we also know now that our thoughts and emotions have a huge impact on our central nervous system uh, neurochemically uh, and, and physiologically it has a, a really big impact so the, you know the way we know that our thoughts and emotions have a direct impact on our physiology and our biology is the very simple act of crying if you think of it you get tired or you get sad and suddenly you start to cry but in order to cry crying is a physiological chemical biological response to an emotion if you get embarrassed you 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 go red in the face so you, your blood your blood cells change your you your pupils change and your skin changes so again we know that your emotion has a, a chemical and biological physiological change so in these times when we're trying to stay well and we're trying to stay in a state that our central nervous system is really at its best we need to be sure and we need to be aware of something that i've been trying to say for 20 years and is that your thoughts and emotions have a direct impact on your central nervous system and your thoughts and emotions the very things that you choose to think about and feel can either enhance your central nervous system upgrade healing upgrade calm upgrade the production of new uh, chemicals like new oxytocin so we also know that if your thoughts and emotions can enhance your central nervous system and your immune system we also know it can infect it we all know what stress and the production of cortisol and adrenaline and your adrenaline does to our immune system so that's the first point i want to make is our thoughts and emotions have a direct impact on our physical and physiological well-being now you might say well jerry that's easy for you to say but it's a very tough environment at the moment and there's lots of scary stuff and you're absolutely right but here's the most exciting thing for anybody that suffers from anxiety what we know from anxiety is that we can feel in a way that is different to our environment so for me in, in my own journey of mental health i've often been in an environment that was full of happiness and full of laughter but i couldn't feel it i've often been in an in an environment of calm but inside i was anxious so we know that we have an ability to think and feel different to our environment now when you think about that if we can feel anxious in a calm and external environment then the opposite is exactly true in a stressful chaotic external environment we can stay absolutely calm we can think differently we can think healthier and we can think bigger than our environment and when we learn that when we learn that we are not our environment and when we learn and understand that our central nervous system our neurochemistry and our biology is responding not to the environment but to our response or interpretation of the environment now that brings great freedom so now you say jerry we're in a very stressful environment we're in a chaotic environment and i will say i know but i will also ask but how are you choosing to respond what are you choosing to focus on because it is absolutely possible for us as human beings to think and feel different bigger to our environment and just before i move on with the meditation which will focus exactly on doing that a couple of years ago i went to write a book and I thought I had something new for the world to reckon to read and the book was entitled noodles at 30,000 feet 
And I want you to remember, noodles at 30,000 feet. Well, what was that about? I had the absolute pleasure of working with a track cycling team. And I'd never met the team before, but I get to go to major championships. And one of the youngest guys on the team had never cycled in a world championship before. He was brand new to the sport, but he had all the power, he had all the physical and all the physiological attributes that could have made him world champion. But we hadn't had time to work on his mental strength. And just before he went on to the track, you sit track side and you're all alone and you put the helmet down over your face and the cameras come into your face and suddenly you realize you're in the world championships. Suddenly you understand that the world is watching you and I could see sitting watching him. I could see the sweat coming off his face. I could see his hands. I could see his breath. I could see he was now in a state of stress. The race started and of course he didn't perform. He became his environment. He physiologically responded to what he was focusing on. So the next day I was flying home in the plane and I was trying to think about how do I get this guy on a program where this doesn't happen to him again? How do I teach him that even in a stressful environment, his mind and physiology can be in a state of calm and composure? And the lucky thing is he provided the opportunity for me to teach him. As we're flying home, I'm sitting down beside him on the other side of the aircraft and I'm looking across and we're halfway home from, from uh, China on an airplane. And I'm looking at him and he's watching him moving his headphones in and he's eating noodles and he's laughing. And whatever he's watching, he's laughing his heart out. So I walk back and I sit beside him and I ask him, what are you doing? I'm watching this movie, he said, and the tears are coming out of his eyes. He says, it's a great movie. So we started talking about the race before and I didn't go well and I could see his physiology was changing and the smile disappeared and suddenly, so he's now physiologically responding to yesterday and he's embarrassed and he's upset. But then I get him back talking about the movie again and instantly he starts to respond physiologically. He starts to smile, his eyes come alive as he's watching the movie. And after four or five minutes of watching the movie, he's sitting there in total happiness and peace. I reminded him something. I said, well, right now, you are in a metal tube. You are 30,000 feet above the ground. There are thousands of tons of explosive fuel in each wing. The plane is by, being flown by somebody you've never met. And yet you're sitting here and your heart rate is low. You're smiling and laughing. Surely this is a more dangerous environment to what you were in yesterday. And I saw his eyes open. Even in that environment where all of that thing, all of those things that could go wrong were there, he was choosing to focus on the TV set. He was focusing on the movie. In any environment, we get to choose our thoughts. We get to choose what we attach our emotions to. And we have the ability to think differently and bigger than the environment because we are not the environment. Our central nervous system responds not to the environment, but what to, to what we choose to focus on. A year later, he's back at the World Championships and in the race, he wins the, f the first ever um, World Championship medal for Ireland and just before he goes out he's sitting in the exact same position he's sitting trackside the same cameras on his face the same crowd is in there it's the exact same environment but his heart rate is slow his eyes are wide open and he's smiling and just before he goes out to race I ask him how are you feeling and he said I'm eating noodles at 30,000 feet that is the gift that each of us has as a human being the environment does not control our thoughts. We can attach our mind to somewhere different. If the environment you're in right now is one of chaos or stress or anxiety, you do not have to attach to it. We can take our thoughts and emotions somewhere else. And it, we don't need to infect the biology of the present with the fear, we don't, with, with, with the fear of the present. So in the small meditation I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to get you 
to mentally and emotionally leave the present and go back, go forward, attach to a different time and a different space, a time of love, a time of passion. And when we go mentally somewhere different, we trigger a different physiological response and we start to feel the production of, of, of oxytocin. We begin to lower cortisol. We begin to come fearless and we realize that we are not our environment. We are not our physiology. We realize that what we are is an electrical circuit, an energy field. And where you choose to place your thoughts is where you get your energy from. And it is amazing during the next phase of this environment that we're in, you can choose to be attached to it and feel the fear and affect your physiology with that. Or you can take your mind somewhere else. So I want to put that into practice. So if you're happy and what I want is we just start a simple meditation. For, for those of you that are happy to close your eyes, please close your eyes and take some deep breaths. If you're not happy to close your eyes, just find a point of focus. Miriam told me that drishti is the word for focus. A point of focus can be an external point or it can be an internal point. In our meditation tonight, I'm going to take you back to a different Trishti. I'm going to take you back to a different point of focus. And when we do, you will feel a different emotion. And that will trigger an onset of different chemicals. And you will become different to your environment. And we start by closing our eyes. And we start to breathe in and we breathe in you. And as we breathe out, we breathe out the old, we breathe out fear, and we let it go. And for five deep breaths, I want you to really focus on that big inhale. Inhale new. That little pause, and then I want you to exhale. But as you exhale, I want you to breathe. I want you to push that away from you now. It no longer serves you. We can't create new until we get rid of the old. We can't take in new oxygen until we get rid of the old oxygen. So big breath in and big exhale out. In order to take in new calm, we have to let go of old fears. We are going to move mentally and emotionally in the next few minutes. I want you to continue to close your eyes. I want you to slowly take your right hand and place it on your heart. And just a few minutes, I want you to feel this heart. This incredible heart that has beaten for you since the day you were born, since before you were born. At times when you wanted to give up sometimes, when your brain said, I can't, this heart said, I can. Maybe in times when we were heartbroken and your brain said, I can't, your heart said, I can. In times when you thought that's enough, I can't go on. Your heart, your incredible, beautiful heart said, I can. Because this heart, since the moment you came into being, the first electrical circuit that entered your system was your heartbeat. The first time the divine, the first time the divine frequency came into contact with your physical being, it was your heartbeat. That is your spark of light, your connection to the divine. Now, can you feel it? 
As you breathe, expand that chest, expand that heart, expand the divine and welcome the divine. You are not a physical being, you are a spiritual being. Now feel that heart that has stood up for you, that has fought for you, that has said one more time, let's go one more. It still wants life. The brain knows fear, but the heart only knows love. Now we begin to leave our brain and we begin to feel our heart. And as you begin to feel your heart, I want you to imagine the people that you love right now. I want you to, as you close your eyes, I want you to imagine that you're face to face with them. Maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your dad, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your children. I want you to see them. And I want you to experience love. The heart is so much more powerful than the brain. When we allow ourselves to feel love, everything else disappears. And I want us to take three deep breaths. With our eyes closed, we breathe into the heart and we breathe in love. We feel that heartbeat, which is an electrical frequency, a connection between the human and the divine. And we breathe. I want you to think about the things you're truly grateful for right now. The people, the memories, the food, the electricity, the life that you have right now. I want you to feel absolute gratitude for it. I want you to remember the last time you hugged your mum or your dad and I want you to feel absolute gratitude for that hug. I want you to remind you that you, if you're lucky enough to have healthy children, what a gift. I want you to feel absolute gratitude. Now if this universe has given you a heartbeat, has given you food and clothes, has given you someone you love, and has given you something to believe in, then it has everything in control. It wants only good for you, and you are safe. Now breathe in that safe. Breathe in that calm. I just want you to repeat, I am safe, I am calm, I am loved, and I am here right now in this moment. I am full of gratitude. I am bigger than my environment. I am free to attach my thinking and my emotion to anything I want. I am not my environment. I am an electrical circuit. I am a vault of energy and I am free. Now, as you close your eyes, and as you breathe into that big heart, that loving heart, that's full of gratitude now, that remembers the most precious hug you've ever hugged, that remembers the most precious moments you've ever had in life, as you begin to feel that gratitude, I want to change the circuit a little bit. In the weeks ahead, there are challenges. But beyond that challenge is a vision. And the vision is the person you're going to meet. It's me, it's my mum that I'm going to hug, my dad that I'm going to hug. Beyond the immediate environment is a future. 
It's a kiss. It's a moment. And it's worth fighting for. But can you see it? I want you to close your eyes. I want your mind and your physiology to be enhanced and inspired by your vision of the future. I want you to see what will that hug feel like. What will the arrival of your new baby feel like? What will your wedding day feel like? What will being in the arms of someone you love feel like? Just like in your past, you have loads of memories of love and gratitude. I promise you, your future has infinite moments of gratitude and love. Your future has moments where you will embrace your inner freedom. You will express your deepest dreams and you will fight for the life that you want because now we know how precious it is. You have an incredible future awaiting. Can you allow that vision, that feeling of the future to wash through your mind and into your heart? Can you breathe it? Can you see it? Can you believe it? It's already happened. It's happening in your mind and in your heart you are creating an electrical circuit an electrical signal and you are connecting with that future you are manifesting it and when we have something to fight for when we have a connection a spiritual connection to something that's bigger and more powerful and more important than the environment then we become bigger and more powerful than the environment. That beautiful question that Mary asked Jesus when he was 11 years old. And she asked him, do you not know who you are? I'm asking you tonight. Do you not know who you are? Do you not know how powerful your heart is? Do you not know how powerful your thoughts and emotions are and the way it can cleanse and enhance your central nervous system? Do you not know that you are not your environment? You are bigger and stronger than it. And I promise you, beyond this temporary environment is a life and a moment that would fill you with such hope and passion and fun and laughter that that's worth fighting for. We are not our environment. We are not condemned to focus on fear. That is why we've been given a heart, something that only knows love passion, courage. And it's no wonder that the electrical frequency, the divine connection, it's no wonder that it's in your heart it turns up first. When we start to get out of our mind and away from fear, and we breathe into our heart, we realize that we are something magnificent. And I want us to finish with five deep breaths. And we breathe in you, and we breathe in infinite, and we breathe out old. We breathe out fear because we have nothing to fear. We are human spirits. And we breathe in love. Bring out, we breathe in peace. And finally, with your hand on your heart, 
I want you to repeat to yourself. I love you. I am enough. I am infinite. And I am not my environment. Each and every single one of us has an ability to think outside our environment, to be bigger and stronger than our environment, because we are not physical beings. We are infinite energy fields. And when we attach our energy fields to memories of future visions of love and gratitude and let that flood through our system and we let that flood through our central nervous system, we become invincible. So from now on, I want you to breathe when you need to. I want you to stop and realize, ask yourself, what am I choosing to focus on right now? What am I choosing to attach to? And if, and we have all the science to prove and all my lived experience prove, if we can think different to our environment, then we can think anything we want. Thank you so much for joining me. It's my gift to, in some ways, allow people to remember how incredible each and every one of us are, how invincible we can be when we ignite our human spirit with kindness and love. Thank you all for joining. I hope you enjoy it. I hope to see you soon. Thank you.